Annual Kingdom and we've just popped over and had a ride on a flight of passage and uh, it just gets better and better it really does I can't wait till next year for mum to be on it I'll see how she enjoys it and then the following year for my mum to be on it um, I'm just wandering through gradually into Asia now as we've got Everest yeah Everest what more can I say well you've done something now haven't you David and Ian uh, really set him going oh well we'll catch up with you later interesting antelope species in that both the males and females are going to have those backward spiral horns on their head. Reaching around five feet in height at the shoulder when full grown. And not seeing any horns on that kudu there, so most likely a female. The black rhino is the smaller of the rhino species found here in Africa, though still pretty heavy. And they're joined by a few pink bat pelicans perched on the island next to them, keeping them some company. Pelicans don't look quite so pink at the moment. <laughs> That's just because they get that name from the pink coloration they'll end up getting during mating season. Otherwise, the rest of the year, they're just this whitish gray color we're seeing. Uh, we'll keep scanning the water, see if there aren't any more hippos down this way. They all look very calm and easygoing, relaxing in the water, but they are considered Africa's most dangerous animal. That's because they are super territorial. So it's a good thing not that 5,500 pounds to us yet, but it's still pretty large. Baby hippos are born at about 50 to 100 pounds, and that baby is certainly okay. They have a range between 16 and 20 feet in length, so they're around the same length as a giraffe. trees next to the giraffe there's some longer horns sticking up those are attached to a few ankle cattle or watusi cattle named after the watusi tribe here in africa who first domesticated that species of cow about 2,000 years ago we might be able to get a little better angle on those guys as well. on a warm day like today you'll notice this elephant is flapping and fluttering its ears that's a great way to stay cool it's kind of like fanning itself it's going to push that extra heat away from the body and it cools down the blood vessels in those ears it's so effective that elephant can even lower its own body temperature up to 15 degrees Fahrenheit just by doing that yeah. on their part. They have surprisingly sensitive skin, so throughout the day they'll be throwing mud, dirt, clay, or a mixture list in the lightest pink of all of them. They're hatched gray and fuzzy, so they get this color that we're seeing over time from a diet of shrimp and other crustaceans. Those crustaceans are filled with a substance called beta kerosene that'll turn those feathers that pink we know and love so much. They're mainly tallest of their species. These guys will average around five feet in height, so they're probably around the same height as some of us here on this truck, if not even taller. Well, pretty relaxed at the moment, but still the fastest land animal in the world. Those cheetahs can go from zero to 60 miles an hour in just under three seconds. You can run up to 70 miles an hour. They spend most of their day lounging around and cat napping, like we're seeing. 
<laughs> and just like house cats, these two out here can purr. On the lookout for their little ears swiveling around like satellite dishes. They rely mostly on a sense of hearing and a sense of smell. And I usually hope that's enough to go see the end that we're on eats actually down on its knees and for good reason. That's just because its head is so heavy it does not have the neck muscles to support itself. So it has to get a little bit closer to that food. <laughs> further to the right of that bond spot. All the owners of those eggs are very rare sight, very reclusive, and at one point completely extinct out in the wild. In fact, the Simistar horned orcs is so seldom seen, they're even believed to be the origin of the myth of the unicorn. If you catch that-